Hi everyone, welcome to The Knit Shift. Uh, it's episode 108. My name is Laura and today is Saturday, June 23rd, 2018. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a rainy, gray, misty, gross Saturday here in Northern Virginia where I live and um, with my boyfriend Josh and our dog Gracie and a whole lot of yarn. If you are new to The Knit Shift, thanks for checking this out. I hope you enjoy it. And if you are coming back, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me. It's been a few weeks since we last spoke. Um, work's been busy, you know, the news business is always busy. If you're new here, I'm a journalist in Washington, DC. Um, I'm an editor and um, I also took a trip to Ohio for a week, which I will talk a little bit about later. So um, I wanted to record sooner, but life got in the way, um, as you guys know, and I appreciate your, your patience with me as I've gotten back to recording. And no one wants to hear excuses, um, but I really appreciate your patience and sticking with me while I've made some decisions about how to record the podcast going forward and how to produce it. And I appreciate your feedback that you guys don't mind if I don't edit it as heavily as I used to. I'm finding that life is just a little crazier these days and if I can film it all in one take and not have to make trims, that really does save me several hours, which was a deterrent for me wanting to record. So thank you for sticking with me and going forward you will see less editing. I'm gonna make sure the focus is still working and I'll try and trim out if I have to like dig something out of my bag and try and get the camera to focus, but in general you won't get a lot of quick cuts and um, highly slick, highly produced videos like a lot of other podcasts have. Uh, I'm all by myself right now. It is Saturday morning, like I said, and Gracie is looking out the window, keeping an eye on squirrels and birds, so I might have to edit out some barking if she decides to make her opinions known to the squirrels that they are not welcome on our porch, so stay tuned for that. So it's been three or four weeks since I last spoke with you. So just a reminder, uh, we do have a group for the podcast over on Ravelry. If you go to the groups tab and search for the knit shift, you will find us. I am on Ravelry as Yarn Stormer. I'm on Instagram as Laura Mahalski and um, show notes can be found at theknitshift.com. This episode is available on iTunes and YouTube and please do subscribe if you haven't in either location. Um, I think that's it for the administrative stuff. I have several works in progress to share with you. I have several FOs, a little bit of yarns, and I have discussion of a knit along that I will, I'll just go ahead and tell you about the knit along plans now. I've been struggling to find our next knit along for the knit shift, and it occurred to me that it's about to be July, and so the second half of the year already, which is insane. Where did the, the past six months go of 2018? Um, but truth be told, I'm ready for fall. I am not a summer creature. I am not cut out for hot weather. I don't like having to walk to the metro in hot weather and walking home late at night. It's still going to be sticky out later in the summer. I'm just, I'm over summer already. Give me the wool, give me the winter. Um, so we're only like three and a half months away from Rhinebeck, which is bonkers. I guess almost four months away. Um, and so if you want to knit like a fall sweater, whether you're going to Rhinebeck or not, now is a good time to start, you know, especially if you're new at doing something that's like fingering weight. So this isn't like a brand new sweater knit along or a pattern knit along. This is going to be the finish that sweater knit along, um, whether you're starting from scratch or picking up a whip, which is what I'm doing. Um, it's going to run from July 1st through at least October 1st, so three months. And my goal is to finish a sweater I've been knitting since the Olympics. So let me show you what it is. This wasn't a whip I was gonna show you this week because I've knit like one row on it. So I started knitting this Grace cardigan by Jane Richmond forever and ever and ever ago. And I like it very much, but I just haven't made a lot of progress. So here is the front right part. So it's got this lace on the front yoke and the back yoke, and I'm like 10 inches into the body. So I'm, I'm really making good progress, and I just have a few, but I'm at the stockinette part. So I just need to buckle down and finish the body and do the sleeves and do the, the edging. I can do that in three months. I need something to motivate me to finish this sweater. Um, so that's my plan. I'll put a thread up in Ravelry so we can get to talking about it and um, have a chatter thread and an FO thread and oop, I think the focus is not focusing. There we go. 
Um, I will have a chatter thread and an FO thread, which is what I usually do for knit alongs, and we'll pull a prize for each. So if you have prizes that you'd be wanting to donate, please DM me on Instagram or Ravelry and we can talk about getting some prizes set up. But I do have a, a little bit of a prize stash in my collection, so stay tuned for that. Um, and that brings us to FOs, so let's get to it. My first FO is a pair of stockinette socks. Surprise, surprise, because most of my knitting is socks these days. Um, I'm calling these my Scooby-Doo socks or my flower power socks because this yarn just screams Scooby-Doo to me. And again, apologies for the lighting. This is Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks That Rock Lightweight in the colorway um, that 70s yarn. And this was a gift from my lovely friend Lennis, aka Bookishly Fab on Instagram. And I love this yarn. This was such, I, I just love working with Socks That Rock. It makes a really beautiful fabric. I mean, look at that stitch definition. These are just my general toe-up sock recipe. Judy's Magic Cast On. Um, increase every third round. Knit on up the foot. Did a fish lips kiss heel. Knit on up the leg. Did two by two ribbing. And Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Unfortunately, these socks are just a tiny bit too snug on me. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep them or give them to um, one of my best friends for her birthday, which is today. So I am gonna try these on one more time. You know how some socks are just a tiny bit too snug, but they stretch out over time. I might keep them, I might give them to her. We'll see, she's um, outside of family. I feel like I've given her the most pairs of socks of anyone. This would be pair number three over the years. I think I've given her two or three others, um, plus a sweater and a blanket for her baby boy. So um, who's not a baby anymore? He's like three, so. Um, yeah, I really like how these turned out. They were nice and tall, and she and I wear the same size shoes, so it would not be a problem to give these to her or keep them for myself. So let me show you my other FO, which is, surprise, surprise, another pair of socks. I This is an FO you've seen before, but I finally put the heels on these. These are um, Online Super Sock Desert Colorway 1856. I knit these on a size zero, and basically all that's new since the last time you saw these is I put in the afterthought heel. So this is the Smooth Operator Sock by Susan B. Anderson, and I, I waited to do the heels until I finished both socks because I wanted to knit the heels two at a time to like kind of get the heel down. And I do feel a bit better about the heel. Um, one thing about knitting the heel two at a time is it's harder to do one of her suggested decreases, which involves manipulating the, um, the last stitch and putting it on the next needle. You can't do that if you're knitting socks two at a time. Um, that sounds really vague, but I don't wanna to give too much away from her pattern. So what I did was um, knit two togethers, which we'll see how they hold up. They look good. I really tried to keep them tight. When I did this heel before with the knit two togethers, I felt like it got really gappy. So we'll see. So these were just little leftover balls of yarn. I kind of love the mismatched heels because everything else on the sock matches. So these are super tall, super cozy socks. Um, Online Super Sock is one of those like German ni wool nylon blends that is so hearty and just reasonably priced. I love them. I can't say enough about things like Online and Opal. Regia is another one. So those are just really great for hardy socks. So um, yeah, so that's that FO. And then I have two works in progress to share with you. So my first work in progress is something I cast on. So I'll tell you about my trip to Ohio now. So my dad um, messaged me, my mom messaged me a couple weeks ago and was like, <coughs> pardon me. This is more talking than I've done in recent weeks, apparently. Well, focus, what are you doing? There we go. Um, she's like, hey, can your dad call you? And like, when your mom does that, you're like, uh, what's going on? So my dad called me and he had to have a heart procedure done. He's totally fine. Um, spoiler alert, he, everything worked out fine, but, um, but it was gonna be kind of complicated. So, um, and he gave me like 10 days notice and um, without going to, into too many details, I really wanted to be there because my brother couldn't. And I looked at flights and I talked to my boss and she gave me the go ahead to work remotely for a week. So because we didn't really know what the procedure was gonna result in, whether he would need heart surgery or not, we, um, we uh, 
I booked the trip for a week basically. I got there on a Saturday, like a week, eight, eight days after he told me about the, the procedure um, is when I would fly out and then I would fly back the following Friday and his procedure was the Tuesday, so kind of right in the middle of the week. So, um, so that's what I did. I got a good price on a flight and I can fly direct now, which is so great and it's like an hour and a half practically like two hours when you include travel time to and from the airport. It's so close. So I flew into Columbus, Ohio and um, visited my parents who live in Dayton, stayed with them all week, got to see my niece um, three times and my um, sister-in-law, which was so nice. And um, my niece is like, she was on the verge of walking and she has since walked since I visited. Um, like just a few steps but she's cruising around and holding onto people's hands and walking and she does this hilarious little belly crawl like not even a belly crawl it's like a scooting like a butt scoot to get around and it's super cute um so that was really nice and i kind of set up an office in my parents dining room and just worked there all week and it was a really busy week because we had the north korea summit um and then on tuesday the day after the summit it was election night in um Virginia where I live so um, so yeah it was a kind of crazy week but everything went well with my dad and I was able to be there while he was recovering at home which was great and then I came home and I was back with Josh and Gracie which was also great um, so while my dad was in the hospital I wanted to start a pair of socks for him because he is extremely knit worthy and he loves the socks that I make so what I did was I started a pair of socks for him and I have since stopped them because I'm a little worried these are too big so he picked out these yarns when I was in Ohio for like either in January or March. I visited, I visited both of those times, but I can't remember when we did this adventure. I think it was March. Um, and I, he picked out two colorways of Lang Jewel. Like, yes, this orange is blowing out your, your, it is, it is that bright. So he picked out this ombre gray and then you aren't really getting a lot of the ombre. Here we go. There's a little bit of the ombre orange. But this, the dark is almost red, it's almost coral. So we picked out two of them so that we could stripe because he has quite big feet. Um, I'm a little worried this sock is just a little too big around. So I did the toe in gray and I'm doing one, two, three, six row repeats of each color before I change to the next. And it's just making these awesome ombre stripes. So he's really excited about it. I did the heel in orange. So I'm gonna have him try them on. I'm gonna see him at a family wedding in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. So um, I'll have him try them on and then I'll continue or if necessary, I'll rip them out. But I knit this entire foot of a sock in like three days because it was, I had, all I did was um, I, I watched the entire final season of the Americans because my parents have cable and a DVR and we do not. So I watched it on their cable and hung out with my dad and worked and ate delicious mom meals. So it was a good week. I mean, it wasn't a vacation because I worked, but it was a really nice week and I'm very grateful to have been there for all of that. This is my commute sock right now. Um, I don't think I was done with the first sock when I last showed you. I don't even know if I'd started the first sock to be perfectly frank, but I'm done with the first sock. This is a gift for a friend who is fighting cancer. And um, I'm, we kind of have like a gift slash card rotation so that she gets something every month or two. And um, I'm not due to send this till like September or October, but I decided to get a head start on these socks. So I finished the first one. She's got tiny feet, like seven and a half, which to me is tiny because I wear an 11. So I finished the first sock super fast and I'm flying through sock number two. I'm... I turned the heel like two days ago and I've done everything above this stitch marker on the train um, in like two commute days, including one journey where I didn't even knit on the way home. <coughs> so I should be done with this sock today, frankly. So basic toe up stockinet sock recipe. Um, and I'm so close to the cuff on it that I'm gonna start a new commute sock today because we might go see The Incredibles 2 and I don't wanna have to like switch to knitting ribbing in the dark movie theater, so I have another sock to show you, or a future sock, like future knitting. So that's it for my works in progress and that brings us to yarns and future knits. So I'll show you that sock that I just mentioned. I'm sorry about these focus issues, guys. I don't know why my camera isn't totally cooperative. So I, wound, I went into my stash and I wound up some deep stash. 
This is Unwind Yarn Company. And I don't remember the base, except it's a really thin merino nylon blend, and the colorway is Ho Holy Festival, Holly Festival, um, kind of a play on the Hindu festival, just a reference to it. So as you can see, it's like pinks and greens and oranges and yellows, and this is going to be really fun. So I have size zero needles planned. I really hope a size zero is th is going to work because I'm a little afraid even that I'd like I would need to go down to like a double zero. So we'll see. It's really thin yarn, but it's really pretty, so I'm going to start that soon. Um, like as soon as in as this episode is uploading to YouTube and then that brings us to a little bit of yarns so I ordered this I want to say like I think I ordered this Mother's Day weekend um, because they had a Mother's Day sale and I took advantage of the 10 or 15 percent off that they offered so for Christmas my very generous brother got me a very generous gift card to Blue Moon Fiber Arts and I was just kind of waiting till I was done with my current sweater to pick out yarn for a new sweater. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and buy the yarn now. Um, I'm not casting it on till I finish another sweater. I'm, I'm not going to be one of those people that cast on multiple sweaters. Um, so I, I have six skeins of this Tigger Targi that I want to share with you. I only pulled out one. It took me forever to decide... Um, what to buy colorway wise but I knew I wanted a semi-solid for a sweater and I got this beautiful green gray green blue teal colorway called Tempest like a storm and it's really really pretty and this Targi the the, the squish and the bounce of this yarn is unbelievable I really yeah I really want you guys to see how beautiful and squishy this is I think this will be a tremendous sweater. Um, I might do a pullover. I've not done a pullover in a while, but I think if I'm going to do a pullover, it would be in fingering weight, and that way I wouldn't have to purl at all, which would be nice. I know, yes, I could steak for a cardigan, whatever. Um, so I have six skeins of this. Each skein is 405 yards, so I have like 2400, 2450 um, yards of this Tigger Targi. And then I still had a little bit of my, I was like, you know what, I'm going to spend a little bit of my own money too. And I got one skein of socks that rock. Thinking about a multicolor shawl, I got a skein of Melusine, which is one of those, I forget the, um, the line, but they have a line of pale whites that are like slightly tinted by other colors. And this is slightly with a green tint to it. So this is socks that rock lightweight. 100% superwash merino, 405 yards, really nice and lovely. So that'll be with like a shawl at some point. So that's my stash enhancement. Um, I feel like it barely counts because it, again, it was a gift card and I waited like six months to spend it. So I feel like that gets me some brownie points in my own whatever system that I've come up with. So I do think that'll be the next sweater I cast on probably because the yarn is so gorgeous. Um, and that brings us to odds and ends and a little bit of beauty talk. I don't have a ton of odds and ends to tell you about. It's been really busy at work, as you might imagine, with so much going on. Um, that's always the case, I found. I've been at this job almost 10 months, a little over 10 months, almost 11 months now, if you can believe it. And, um, yeah, it's coming up on, um... A couple days from now is a year since I had my interview at the post, which is crazy. I cannot believe I'm coming up on a year since I moved. Like, we are going to stay in this apartment another year. We talk to our landlords. We're going to stay put. Um, it's just crazy how time flies. So Josh and I have been talking about how unbelievable it is that we've been here almost a year. We can't believe it. It feels like home to me. It's been an interesting transition. It's gone very seamlessly for me, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I love the new job. My coworkers are wonderful. Um, oh, and I did get to do a really fun Instagram takeover. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I am Laura at Laura Mahalski there, and um, and that's linked in the show notes, so you don't have to know how to spell my last name. But my office does has like a an Instagram account that is run by non. It's run by someone who's not in the newsroom and. 
Um, it's like meant to shed light on the culture of the Washington Post and it's called at Wash Post Life and every Tuesday they have someone do a takeover for a takeover Tuesday and sh share a little bit about their job and what they do uh, and a little bit about themselves as human beings. Um, so I volunteered for this back in like January, February, and just because of the way the schedule works, I was not put on the schedule for it till June 5th. And I was super excited for it. And I worked a late night shift that day. I didn't work till 5.30. That kind of shift only happens like four or five times a year for me um, because it was an election night. And so I had to think, I wanted to think of some stuff to um, populate the account with during the day when people are expecting to see content. like because most people work nine to fives. So I decided to put together a video of like grammar and editing pet peeves because I'm an editor and um, and it, it came out super great. I edit, thanks to this podcast, I do video editing so I knew how to put it all together. I gave it a little music. Um, so it was just really cool to take it over and interact with people who read the post and um, I got really good feedback when it was all the whole day was over um, the guy that runs the account was really happy with how it went so that made me happy you know I, I okay Gracie sorry Gracie's crying so I was really thrilled that he seemed to like it and he got good feedback from people and um, a couple folks in the company told, came up to me and said they really enjoyed it so that was wonderful to hear and I was very happy about that and relieved because it felt like a big responsibility to take this on. So um, so that was really fun. So Wash Post, at Wash Post Life, it, if you scroll back a few, I don't know, eight or ten posts, you'll see all of my stuff. I think I did seven or eight photos that day. Um, what else? Yeah, work's been going really well and um, not much else to say. I mean, all I do is work and knit and hang out with Josh and Gracie and occasionally friends. It's a it's a good, good little life that I have and I'm very grateful for that. So um, I do have the trip to Pitts, the Pittsburgh area coming up in two weeks for our, my cousin's wedding. My parents are coming to town um, two weeks after my cousin's wedding. And we're going to see Hamilton, my mom and I. I bought two tickets to Hamilton for a Saturday afternoon matinee. And we're going to a baseball game Friday night. My parents have not been to Nationals Park, so we're going to go there. Um, which It's a great baseball stadium if you ever get the chance to go. And um, then a couple weeks after that, I have a little weekend getaway planned with some of my cousins. Um, so it's going to be a, a, just a little weekend trip here or there. No big vacations for Josh and me. We haven't done like a big trip since we went to New York about a year and a half ago. So um, so I'm excited for, for this wedding weekend um, because we don't get to travel much these days. And yeah. So I have one beauty recommendation for you guys this week. It's Fresh Sugar Hydrating Lip Balm. This is the peach scent. I also own it in lemon and caramel. Um, it's available on Sephora.com and Fresh.com or FreshBeauty.com. I don't remember what their website is. Um, the options on Sephora are limited. I had to get the lemon and the peach through Fresh. It was exclusive. I believe these are limited, um, limited edition lip balms and they're really, really nice. I, they give you just a little bit of shine. I'm wearing the peach now, um, but it's really good hydration. I love wearing it right before, I put it on right before bed and wear it to bed and it's just really, really nice. So I can't say enough good things about this lip balm. It's, a, it's more expensive than most lip balms, but I highly recommend it. Um, so that's it for me this week, you guys. I think that's everything. Um, I hope to be back in, Two weeks probably won't happen because of my cousin's wedding. Maybe three weeks. We'll see. So until next time, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.